I'm here at Ship Las Vegas, which is a UPS, FedEx, and United Postal Service ship and drop off business. Now that might sound pretty boring, but let me tell you, this is a business that is really simple to run that can make you a lot of money. So we're gonna go meet the owner, Lisa, who happened to be a former Miss Las Vegas and show how she started this business and how it's making some serious dough. And by the end, you'll probably wanna get in the mailbox business as well. So let's go check it out. All right, Lisa, Hi, it's good welcome. to see you again. Nice to see you. Yeah, so this is it. This is the spot. This is it. Not a lot of super fancy stuff in here, but it definitely gets the job done. Yeah, so obviously there's a lot that goes into this business and there's a lot of different revenue streams, but let's talk about the first and obvious one, which are these mailboxes. So yes. how many mailboxes are there? I see like what, 200? Yeah, 220. 220, mm -hmm. that's the last one. Yep. And then we're waiting on another bank of 220. That'll go over on this wall. Okay. And then we'll eventually do another 220 there and 220 there. Yeah, you got, um, like you could add over a thousand easily. You could yes. put even like a middle row if yes. you really want to do. And that's why I wanted to configure the space in that format. So especially if you're looking to either start your own from scratch or even if you want to acquire one, you want to make sure that there's a huge open space so that you can put in lots of mailboxes first because this is going to be your steady recurring revenue every month. Got it. So tell me, these are like the smaller ones. Yeah, these are smalls and they're 20 a month. Mediums are 30 a month and then the larges are 35 a month. Mm. So sometimes you'll see like um, the large ones, it's just based on kind of volume of mail. And you'll yeah. ask your customer, you know, how much mail do you think you're gonna be getting? And for example, one of our customers has a property management company. Yeah. So they get a lot of like kind of notices and checks via mail. Yeah. So they have a huge abundance of mail. Right. We have other customers that need a small box simply because they get a lot of packages. Ah. So they're like, I so don't yeah, how does, how do packages of... work? Yeah, so clearly they don't fit in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so whatever doesn't fit in here, we hold it in the back. And that's the nice thing again about this business model too, is that you don't need a ton of storage space, even though it sounds a little counterintuitive where you would think, okay, if we're holding packages for people and accepting them on their behalf, we need tons of storage space. The reality is, is that it's high volume, right? So it's constantly turning. Yep. We may be accepting packages for folks, for a lot of people, but in general, they're coming to pick them up really quickly. Mm. So you have all of these thus far, and like, you know, I treat these like little passive income properties, mini essentially. Mini storage units. Yeah, these yeah. are like mini storage units. The maintenance is low. There's not anything to do with them. Like it's Correct, just, yeah. Like you don't, it's a lock and key. The renter isn't damaging, damaging yeah. these units, right? Yeah. There's nothing to either clean up or improve if for whatever reason your mailbox holder closes their box and you want to put a new one in. There's nothing to do to the box. So what's like your vacancy rate on this? You know, like how, how many of these are actually being utilized? Yeah, so I mean, we're at over 90% on this on this set of units here, wow. which is why we ordered another bank. It's a super sticky business in the sense that once people have their boxes, and we have many box holders who have been with us for several years because they don't want to change their address again. Yeah, I mean, when you're on the, you know, if you're running a business and you set it up, your entity and all that, you're gonna mm -hmm. use this as your address. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you wanna do is go rechange it for all the other stuff you got going on. Absolutely. So. And even on the registered agent side too, here in Nevada, in general, every LLC needs a registered agent, has yep. to be listed with Secretary of State. And so we can act as their commercial licensed registered agent ah. too. Yeah, I mean, for 20 bucks a month, mailbox. like, this is nothing. So okay. I love that. So going over here, I mean, obviously you're going to do another 220 units mm -hmm. and that should double revenue. And I mean, the cool thing I like about this business is like the startup cost is super low. Like this, super low. this building is just a blank office space that mm -hmm. doesn't cost a ton of money. My guess is, like how many square feet is this? So this one is just around 1400 square feet. 1400 square feet. Mm -hmm. And what are you paying? Like three grand a month or something? We're at like 2,500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, with cams. Yeah. So it's solid, right? With this location in particular, when we had first moved in, this space had been previously utilized by a tenant that had a photography business. Okay. So they had these like weird half walls jutting yeah. out in yeah. places. Yeah, they just had different sets. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, I see the lines. Yep, exactly. Yep. And so it costed me about $10,000 to do the demo. Got to it. knock down the half walls. And then of course I asked for credit from the landlord for yep. tenant improvements, right? So essentially net net, it cost me nothing out of pocket. Yep. 
And that was the only like improvement we had to make to the space. There fun, was no like real build out. Fun fact, our first office space where I've done office tours on, it was a $250,000 build out because wow. it was gray shell. Wow. We got glass and all this cool stuff mm -hmm. and it was zero out of pocket for me. Nice. So That's it was great. That's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> so what does it cost to go get a new one of these? Like. Yeah, so this was just built by a local carpenter okay. and it costed us around $1,500. You could go like super fancy with anything that's in here. All of this is considered like furniture, right? Meaning this is not yeah. like bolted down no. to the floor, right? Nope. So even our, our shipping counters and stuff, it's it's furniture. It's not yeah. a tenant improvement. Yep. So it was all built by local carpentry and that's way better than having to hire a general contractor to do tenant improvements. Yep. Completely different. Yep. So what about the mailboxes? What are you going to pay for all those? It's going to be around $3,900. And in the first month, once they're all leased out, mm -hmm. they'll that'll pay for it. At 220 boxes, if you're averaging $30 per box between the medium, large, and then the smalls, you're at almost seven grand. Seven grand. And the vision is to have, you know, you already got seven grand right there. That's another seven, seven, seven. Then maybe even two more. Like, I mean, you could be bringing in, you know, over 40 grand a month just in mailboxes. Right. And then if the there's shipping, enough demand. And then the shipping is just pure profit. Yeah. So let's talk about like the other things that you've got going on in the store. So are you guys selling books now too? <laughs> are you the new Barnes and Noble? No, like what no, is this? No, we're not selling books. These are totally <laughs> free. Um, this is just kind of like our little community involvement piece. Okay. We started this actually at another store that we have. And it was just because that particular store, we had had customers in there who were saying that the public library was far for them. Okay. And then we had someone come in with like a huge box of books that they wanted to donate. And so yeah. we're like, okay, cool. Let's just throw them on a table. Yeah. And it turned into this book exchange. Like bring, bring a, a book, book, take a book. So you always got a supply. Yes. And it's just a this is, fun... This is a great movie. I've seen this. Oh, really? This. I haven't seen it. Yeah, A Dog's <laughs> Purpose. I want to say the dog, like, gets reincarnated or something, but it, it was a fun it was a fun movie. <laughs> <laughs> then he saves his owner. And Add it's, it to it's the It's this list. whole thing. Add it to the list. All right, so I get that the mailboxes are making money. So mm -hmm. what are some of these other services that bring in revenue? So one of the other services we offer is notary. So here in Nevada, we'll pay for our staff to get their notary public. Okay. And it costs about $200 all in okay. um, with their book and their stamp and the certification and stuff. Yep. It's good for five years. Yep. And we charge our customers $10 per notarial act per stamp. Yeah, someone's getting notarized right now yeah. as we're doing this. And one of the things that we offer here is because all of our staff does have their notary public, you don't have to make an appointment to show as up. a customer. Exactly. You can just come anytime that we're open, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6, okay. and bring your documents. As long as you have your legal form of identification, we're happy to get it notarized for you. Okay. And so it's been great. Even like the bank across the street, they've sent over many customers to us because someone will try they to walk in. They didn't want to do it. And, yeah. yeah. They didn't have an appointment. They didn't have their notary there. Yeah. The no appointment exactly. So they literally would just send them to us. Yeah, these guys will do it. Ten bucks, and mm -hmm. for you guys, I mean, that's a hundred percent margin. I mean, once it you is. get them motorized, it's just yeah. part of your duties. Mm -hmm. And we do thousands of dollars a month just in notary. Wow, like this is that's you a know, big money maker. It's it's an, kind of a relatively easy, straightforward. As long as you know everyone's abiding by the rules yeah. of notary public, and and they're pretty clear. Yeah, and so it just makes it really easy for us to again provide a great service to our yeah. customers. No, I love that. So I see you guys have boxes over here. Yes. So, so this, this is, is probably big item. business. <laughs> sure. Well, and this is another item. Um, just even like this this box rack. Yeah. Again, built by a local carpenter, as you can see, with like the cheapest wood we can find. Right. Yeah. 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 This is not fancy. It doesn't cost the, a ton. Let me say, you know, this business. I, I was expecting like, you know, crazy decor and all this stuff, but no, it's like cut and dry. <laughs> We're here to like ship packages you know, provide a service and we're good. It's super People aren't hanging over. out here. No, no, no. <laughs> in fact, like that's not the business model, right? Yeah. If they're hanging out, you're doing you're something You're gonna build a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, no. they're, they're doing something wrong, right? Yeah. If, if they're hanging out, because we wanna make sure it's an efficiency service. Yeah. So people are running in, they're dropping off their Amazon package yeah. and they gotta go, right? They yeah. wanna run in, check their mail and leave. So we wanna make it as seamless and efficient and smooth as, pos as possible. So I've shipped before with like um, these flat rate boxes yeah. that you uh, USPS and so they just charge you for the box and that includes shipping and everything else in the so, price. So how do you make money? Yep. So with every carrier, US Postal Service, UPS and FedEx, for example, we pay a low corporate rate. 
Okay. We have not only a corporate account with them, but we're also what's called an authorized retailer. Okay. So we have access to special corporate rates that like the general public or a regular business client wouldn't have. Okay. So as a result, as a result we're able to set a margin in there. Got and every it. independent store is going to be different. Right. You might have some stores out there that are charging like some crazy 70% margin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, why is it so expensive, right? Because they're setting their margins at that Got cost, it. right? Okay. We try to hover ours anywhere between 35% to 50%, yep. depending on the carrier. Got it. So for example, our lowest margin is US Postal Service, no surprise. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> UPS is in the middle and FedEx is, is, high margin. is the highest margin, exactly. So speaking of that, um, you know, you guys are a, a drop off ship business. So can anyone just drop off their USPS stuff yeah. and with you guys? Yeah, and any label you have. So let's say you have your UPS um, Amazon label that you yeah. printed from home, come drop it off. You have a FedEx label that someone emailed to you, come drop it off, no problem. And then on the back end, on the business side, again, because we're an authorized retailer, so we get paid, not US Postal Service, but the other two carriers, we get paid per package, even if it's a drop off. Oh. So even if we didn't generate the label, we had nothing to do with the so shipment. So how much would you guys typically get paid for a drop-off yeah so with UPS it's about 60 cents a label and Got with it. FedEx it can be a dollar a label and then so why would you take USPS if they don't pay you it's just a matter of convenience right so when like ultimately if we want to offer if we want to be like that spot the drop-off spot for our customers we're happy to take their USPS drop because it'll get the rest of their business presumably they're gonna come in and have to ship out something they don't have a label for right mm -hmm. or maybe they need something urgently shipped out and then we're doing a FedEx label for them or whatever got it. maybe mailboxes maybe notary whatever it could be got it we want to be convenient for them I've always wanted to try one of these things out it's my new job I've got the hopper and the peanuts. <laughs> Super simple. So this is the last section of the office. I mean, like I said, it's a small place that's you know doing yeah. great things. So what is this? So this is literally just where we're holding packages. Um, and again, even though you know, let's say we got over two hundred mailbox customers, right? And we're turning and burning, you know, Amazon packages and Wish and all this stuff. It's because there's such rotation in it. Mm -hmm. You don't need a ton of space in the back end yeah. because people want their stuff, right? Do, so they're do you guys ever got to call people and you're like, hey, you, you're like your mailbox is full. Like, sure, yeah. come get it. Yeah, we at one time we had a situation where uh, it was like a mattress, you know, but like the rolled up one, <sighs> yeah, but it yeah. was a big box, yeah. right? This mattress and like, I don't know if she was like away in Europe, like this mailbox customer was somewhere and this mattress was here for like, three months <laughs> and we couldn't get a hold of the mailbox customer. Wow. So like, what happens? Well, we're like, did they pass away? Like what, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're like getting a response, but they were still making their payment every month. Right. And so we're like, something's happening. Like what's going on? Um, we ended up finding out this person did, was just out of the country. Right. Um, but we always ask them to like, please communicate with us so that yeah. we just know, you know? Is it, is it like storage wars if they stop paying? It's just like, <laughs> we're taking over your mailbox and your packages and we're auctioning them off. No, um, <laughs> what we do is, um, it's happened very rarely, but if there's a circumstance where you have a mailbox customer who, let's say their credit card goes bad because you have an auto charge, yeah, right? Yeah. Let's say their credit card goes bad and they ghost you. Right. Like never return the key. You never hear from them again. Their yeah. phone number's disconnected, right? So what we do is it's within our mailbox contract and it'll say that um, technically we only have to wait 30 days after non-payment, but we'll we'll try to give them as yeah, much yeah, time yeah. as possible. And then we'll just do return to sender on all their mail. Got it. So if it's been chilling here and it's abandoned, right? Yeah. And we've, we've shown every which way of trying to get in touch with you. After that, boom, it's all return to sender. Mm -hmm. Anything that arrives subsequent, return to sender. Wow. And that's just what okay. it's gonna be. So, I mean, for me, the mailbox business sounds amazing because when I first got started in business, I couldn't afford my own office space or anything else. And so I actually got an executive suites right around the corner from this. Mm -hmm. It's funny because you're in a location where I started my entrepreneur career. Really? I had my executive suites. That's so the, cool. the storage units right across on life storage mm -hmm. are where I was flipping couches and no everything else. No way. So wow. this is like side hustle <laughs> nation everywhere, right over here, right? The side hustle vibes. Yeah, yeah. They're, right yep, they're all right here. This is where entrepreneurs get started. So <laughs> Love it. I ended up uh, renting a mailbox from them for like a hundred a month. Mm. Far more expensive than this. Sure. Yeah. Because I wanted a legit business address and everything mm -hmm. else and like to your point, it's such a sticky business because 
I mean, the value proposition is great. Hey, for 30 bucks a month, mm -hmm. you can have a legit address. It's not gonna like break the bank. Right. People aren't gonna know where your home address is. It right. makes you look more professional. Mm -hmm. So. And it's a street address. Yeah. It's not, um, it doesn't say PO box. So for example, if you get a mailbox and you rent it from the United States Postal Service from the post office, your box will be PO box 15. Yeah, then you right? know it's not legit. And you know, well, you know, it's a P.O. box. Yeah, yeah. And for, for example, Nevada Secretary of State, they don't accept a P.O. box address oh. for your paperwork, for example. Got it. With our types of stores, you get a street address. So here it's 5325 South Fort Apache Road, Suite D12, right? D12. If your box is 12, for D220. example. D220. Exactly right. Got it. Exactly. So it looks like it could be a suite, yep. right? It looks like a street address. It operates like a street address. And it's perfectly acceptable to utilize really anywhere that you need to use a business address. Yeah. I love it. That, I mean, it's just such a great business model, super sticky, super simple, low cost to start and everything else. So what's the upside look like owning a business like this? Like how much can somebody expect to make? Yeah. So, I mean, in each of these stores, um, I would say it varies as you're ramping up, but yeah. I mean, it's anywhere between, you know, our, our first year, once we started getting profitable, so it was into year two, um, right around 300,000 in revenue. Yep. Um, and then, I mean, now we're, you know, it's upwards closer to five. The store that I modeled my businesses off of, um, granted he's been in business for 14 years, um, but he does a million dollars out of 1200 square feet. Wow. So what's he doing different to double his revenue? Well, one, it's been the longevity. Um, he's just become th the stop, yeah. right? The place. Um, he's in a location that's anchored by an Albertsons. Got it. And he's in 89135, which is the fastest appreciating zip code in Las Vegas. Yep. Um, it's a place with, you know, high-end homes, high-end clients. Yep. So frankly, he does a lot more FedEx than we do. Okay. And that I've seen is one of the key line di differentiators in relation to revenue and profit. Got it. So you've got this location and three others, all here in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and you're looking at acquisition in other states and Vegas and everything else. Yeah, so we had um, Robert Kiyosaki actually come visit. He's very close friends with um, Ken McElroy, who's yep. my real estate mentor. And Robert, we have photos from him actually in this store. Yep. And he's like walking around and he was like, Lisa, he was like, if you don't have 40 of these stores <laughs> within the next two years, like yeah. I'm cutting you off. You failed. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was like, we will never talk again. And I was like, Okay, like I hear you, you know, and he was like mini storage units. He was like, this makes sense. Yeah. Like, why are you not doing more of these? This makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if Robert Kiyosaki will sign off on the mini storage <laughs> units, then I need to like get focused. Yeah, no, I agree. And Ken's a good buddy of mine too. And I just think like, as I'm looking at the business and the opportunities and the, the low startup, I'm just like, man, this is such a good, you know, even if you only own one store, right? Like this is your main gig or your side hustle, yeah. like, you know, it's a great I lifestyle. Love it. It's a great lifestyle business. Like I said, for us, our store hours are Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. But really, you know, you, you flex up and flex down depending on what your community needs. And then if you are just like an owner operator, kind of mom and pop, you can have your one store and that can be a great lifestyle business for you where you eventually scale up and you hire a part-time person mm -hmm. and then you have flexibility. Yeah. And the other amazing thing about this business model, there's nothing to take home. Yeah. There's no take home work. Right. Yep. This is like you lock up everything, right? And you're out of here by six fifteen. Yeah. There's not like anything for you to do. <laughs> there's nothing to like take home and work on, right? Yeah. And then also, what I love about this business model is that, like, the drama is low in yeah. the sense that, of course, staffing can always be challenging. But when it comes to like drama with interfacing with customers, there's not a lot of it. I think the most drama we have is when. Maybe like once a quarter, this will happen, where a carrier, Postal Service, UPS, FedEx, they will lose a package. Got it. They lost it, right? Yep. We didn't lose it. It went out the door yep. with the carrier, but the carrier has blamed. lost the package, right? Yep. And you check the tracking and it says it's like in transit in LA and yep. they're like, we can't find it. Right. Um, and it never arrived to final destination. Right. And so, um, of course, you know, we want to be as helpful as possible. And we have channels to try to help like you know, get some sort of shipping credit or anything like that through the carrier. Yeah. But that's what's nice. Like that, that is like the most like draw. Yeah, the, the, they're doing all the heavy lifting. You guys are just the facilitating are the mm -hmm. transaction. I think it's great. Exactly. And um, you had told me recently too that my good friend Cody Sanchez told you, hey, you need to like put out a course on this because yeah. people need to know how to do it. And I was gonna ask the same thing. I'm like, if somebody wanted to get started, I mean, like there's a lot of other elements to go and make this successful. Um, like, how do they learn? 
and you already got it. So we'll link to that down below because uh, I, I just think it's a great business for people to start. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know, it wasn't something that had come to mind, but you know how prolific she is with like, you've got the processes, now you need to share the processes. Yeah. And I remember we were in this store and she was like, why do you not have information yeah. out about it? And I was like, I don't know. And she's just <laughs> like, just do it. And this is months and months and months ago. It was um, probably when she was speaking at my event. We talked about it then, and I yeah. told her, I gave her an update, because we had dinner um, yeah. that night after she spoke at your event, yeah. and I like updated her. I was like, you will be proud to hear on accountability side <laughs> that I have put it together. You know, At that time, I had finished the outline. Yeah, yeah. I was working on it, and she was like, good. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really like kind of cut and dry. It sh literally shares my SOPs. Um, it shares what worked for us here, what marketing tactics worked yep. for us, what didn't work for us, yep. what we lost money on, um, and it's just been, it's been really cool to put it together. I love it. Well, I appreciate you sharing the business with us. We Thanks. actually filmed a podcast that's way more in depth where we talk about her $50 million plus real estate portfolio, $20 million plus venture capital fund. Like this is kind of like the small thing she does. This is the side hustle. So if you guys want to see that podcast, make sure you click this next video right here and you'll be able to check it out.